Android 15 has recently reached the stable release channel on Graphene OS. So if you're watching this video, then you'd likely have it installed on your device at this time. In this video, I wanted to cover a few visual changes that I noticed along with a couple new features. If there's something you found, feel free to leave that down below in the comments. So the first change is the password authentication pop-up. So let's go ahead and open the incognito tab on Vanadium. You can't see this because screen recording blocks it. But on the old one, we can see it's more short and boxy. On the new one, it's taller and curved. Not really a huge change. Personally, I like the short and boxy one better, but it is what it is. Let's switch back to the regular tab so you can see the screen recording. It wasn't that convenient product placement. In the shell is my new podcast I launched a couple months ago. It's stories of hackers, malware, and the people who shape tech. Season one is on the worms that have flooded the internet over the past couple of decades. So if you want to listen to that or check it out, you can head on over to intheshellpodcast.com. The next visual change that I noticed, if you hit the volume slider and then hit the three dots at the bottom, again, we can see things are a bit more rounded. I guess you could say your phone is a bit more curvaceous now. Not much has changed in terms of functionality. You do have an option up here for what device the audio is playing on. But besides that, it's relatively the same. Next, let's check out the tiles at the top. So if you go to Bluetooth, there's now an option to automatically turn it on tomorrow. I think this option was primarily added for the find my device functionality. So if you want to disable it today, but you don't want to forget to enable it tomorrow, you can just leave that turned on. I think this feature also exists on iOS. So perhaps they're mirroring that functionality as well. I personally don't have a use for that feature at this time, but it is a new option. So this next feature is actually something I recently learned about. I knew the option to use split screen existed on my Pixel tablet, but I did not know that it was possible on the phone. So in order to use split screen, which does work on Android 14 and Android 15, select the first app that you want to open, then pull up from the bottom, tap the app icon at the top. Then we see the option for split screen. Then select the second app that you want to use. I'll select Vanadium. And we can now see both apps are shown on our screen. You can then change the scale at which each app is shown or how much of your screen it takes up. But the new feature on Android 15 is that if you pull up again from the bottom and then tap the two icons at the top, we can now see on Android 15, we have the save app pair option. So if we go ahead and select that, we now get an icon on our home screen, which now if you select that, those apps will now open together. I've used split screen a couple times when copying passwords from my password manager to my browser to log in somewhere or to another app. So the next feature is app archiving. So if you long press on an app, go to app info. You can now see the archive option on the left. If you don't have Play Store installed in the user profile where you're trying to archive the app, then the option will be grayed out like you see here. The reason for that is that it needs to be able to download the APK again once you do archive the app. So how this works is, let's say I had Play Store installed in this profile. If I select archive, the APK is then replaced with an archived APK from what I understand, which is just a fraction of the size of the actual app APK. So now instead of having the actual app APK, which could be a couple hundred megabytes, you now have something which is a fraction of the size. The other feature of this is that it does not delete your user data. So if you archive the app, the actual APK, like I said, is replaced with a small one and your user data is saved. So when you do restore it in the future, your app will be right where you left off. This is likely a feature I will not be using. The apps I have installed, I use them, so I don't see a need to archive them. And even with only 128 gigs of storage on this device, I have a bunch of music synced locally, pictures, videos. I'm still only using 46% of the storage. So again, I don't see a need for myself to use this. And now the last new feature, which I think people are most excited for is private space. One major caveat to this feature is it's only available in the owner user profile. So if you're in a secondary user profile, you will not see the option. This is just going to be a quick overview of the feature, but in the future, I do plan to do a full video on it with some testing and different examples. So to set it up, we need to go to settings, scroll down to security and privacy, then select private space. You need to enter your phone pin. I changed mine to 54321 just for this video since this is my primary device. Select next. We have some details here on what private space is. Hide or lock private apps in separate space. 
set up a lock, install apps. So one thing to keep in mind is that apps stop when you lock your space. So if you install an app there that you expect to get notifications for, once you lock your space, that app is stopped and you will not get notifications. So only put apps in there that you expect not to run in the background. You can now select between using your screen lock or choosing a new lock for the private space. I'm going to choose a new lock, enter my phone's existing pin. I'm going to skip the fingerprint setup for this. I'm going to set a pin. So we're going to set a new pin here, 9876. Confirm. We're all set, done. And we can now see we have the private space on the bottom here in our app drawer. So when you swipe up, you see that, select it, enter the new pin that we set. And our private space is now unlocked. So a private space is an isolated workspace for apps and data, similar to both user profiles and work profiles. All three forms of profiles also have entirely separate VPN configurations. So what that means is I can have Orbot installed in my main owner profile, and then I can install Mulved in my private space. That wording sounds a little bit strange, but I guess it is what it is. So if I have Mulved installed here, that network connection in the private space, since it has its own VPN configuration, will use Mulved and the main owner profile will use Orbot. In addition, all forms of profiles have separate encryption keys. You can keep a private space at rest while the owner user is logged in, just as you can with a secondary user. So if you're currently using work profiles in your main owner profile, I would suggest using the private space feature instead. It has better OS integration and isolation, and you're no longer dependent on a third-party app. And like I mentioned, I plan to do a full video on the private space feature in the future. But for now, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll see you next time.